Welcome to part four of the Heathkit AP1800 preamplifier series. In part one, I told you a bit about the history of Heathkit's Pro Series components, and we did an unboxing of our new old stock 40-year-old unbuilt kit. In part two, we built the speaker selector, input selector, mode selector, power supply, and moving coil boards. In part three, we built the main circuit board and control board. If you missed those episodes, you may want to go back and check them out. In this episode, we'll remove the corrosion from our chassis parts, the rust from our power transformer, and we'll paint them with protective coatings. Let's begin. Before we get too far into building our chassis, I really do want to clean up some of these parts. If you saw part one of this series, you'll recall that some of the parts did have a little bit of corrosion on them, despite the fact that the box didn't appear to have any water damage and most of the parts were in excellent shape. None of these parts were directly sitting in any water, but they must have been in a somewhat high humidity environment, which has caused a little bit of surface corrosion. You can see it here on these, what I believe are galvanized uh, pieces, and on the transformer itself. So before I get heavy duty into trying to remove this with rust remover or very aggressive tactics, I'm just going to try to polish these up a little bit very gently on my polishing machine, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And let's see how far that gets us. Here's my polishing machine. It's basically a bench grinder that's mounted to a stand. On this side here, you can't see there's a grinding wheel attached, and on this side, there's a polishing buff wheel. And the way this works is you have different types of buffs and different types of polishing compounds depending on the job that you'll be doing. For the part we're going to try to polish up now, I'm going to use the stainless steel compound with a ventilated buff. When I turn this on, it's going to get a little bit loud, obviously, so I won't be able to explain what I'm doing. The first thing you'll see is me applying a little bit of compound to the buffing wheel, and then I'll attempt to polish off our part. Let's give it a try. Okay, so using this polishing wheel, we're not really cutting through the corrosion that much, so we're going to have to go a little bit more aggressive with this. So instead of this polishing buff, I'm going to switch now to a sisal type wheel and see if that doesn't cut it down a little bit better. And let's also switch to a more aggressive compound. This is the emery compound. This is a little bit better for removing corrosion. So let's see if this combination works better for us. Okay, we're definitely making some progress. Uh, I'm getting a little curious now how a wire brush might work. So I'm just gonna quickly swap out this wire wheel and just gently touch it to see if uh, this doesn't work better for us or see if this is gonna be too aggressive. Let's just give it a quick try. Just note that when you're doing this, good idea to wear eye protection such as a shield. So you can see that the steel brush is removing the surface corrosion much better than the polishing, which really wasn't going to cut through it. So this was a little bit deeper than I thought it was going to be. It seems to be working well, and it doesn't seem to be removing the galvanized coating, so we'll still have a nice galvanized finish on this. We're not getting down to the raw steel. Let me continue. So it looks pretty good. We cut down a lot of that corrosion. I can't quite get in here with this wheel, so I might have to get in there with uh, and do this by hand a little bit, these little pieces here. Again, I think we're in good shape. I don't think we've removed the galvanized part of the steel. I'll clean this up a little bit, and I'll show you what it looks like and when we're done, and I'll get going on the other parts as well. Okay, looking pretty good. Now that we've removed the corrosion from these chassis parts, um, just want to make sure that these are still protected with the galvanization, making sure that I didn't uh, remove that layer and haven't gone through to the raw steel. 
So what I'm doing here is a test. I'm going to let these soak a little bit in water. I'm going to take them out periodically, expose them to the air, put them back in the water. Just, you know, put it through a torture test to see if this starts to uh, rust. Um, if there is exposed steel, these will start to rust pretty quickly. So I suspect that for the most part, the, the zinc plating is, is still just fine and that there may be a couple of spots where I have worn through. So wherever we see rust here, we'll touch up with some zinc cold galvanization spray. Well, it certainly didn't take long to start seeing rust on some of these chassis components. Let me show you. I actually only had these in the bath for about 10 minutes, then removed the pieces and exposed them to the air. And within 10 minutes or so, the rust started appearing, but not on all the parts. Let me show you. This part, for example, here, clearly showing some rust. So this piece will need to be treated. The side's pretty good. Seems like the galvanization is doing a good job here. But over here, we're going to need to touch that up. This part overall looks good, seems to be immune to rust. So probably not a problem with that one. This one had a lot of corrosion on it, so I had to go a little deeper on this with the uh, removal. And uh, yeah, it looks like I've exposed some of the bare steel here and you can see the rust. So that will need to be treated. This one should be fine. I don't see any signs of rust on this one. Uh, I'll look a little more closely, but I think this one's fine. And this big sheet here, you can clearly see where the uh, heavy oxidation took place and where it went a little heavy on the removal of the oxidation with the abrasives. And you can see here and here and here, the galvanization has been removed. So we'll need to touch this up. This whole side will be treated and I might do this side as well, although I'm just getting the powder here, which actually isn't indicative of there being a problem. Sometimes the galvanization itself will, will do that, but it's, uh, it's not allowing any rust, which is good. But I'll probably do both sides just to make this look nice. All right, so let me go back. I'm going to scrub these up with the wire brush, get them clean again, and we'll hit them with a shot of cold galvanization. As you can see, the parts turned out absolutely fantastic, and we shouldn't have any more issues with corrosion. The cold galvanization spray I use doesn't provide true galvanization like you'd get with a hot dip process, but it does contain 93% zinc, which will provide a strong protective barrier. The paint isn't very conductive though, so if Heathkit calls for any grounds on these parts, we'll have to remove a layer or bite through it with a piercing washer. Let's move on now to cleaning up our power transformer. As you'll recall from the unboxing, it has a fair amount of rust that needs to be removed and it really should be repainted. Let's start by taking the transformer apart. Now let's use a Dremel with a polishing wheel to remove the rust from the bare steel. The outer shells of the transformer are painted, but there are still scratches and rust. Let's soak them in evapo-rust along with the screws. It's been about six hours. Let's take out our transformer housing and the screws from our evapo-rust bath and see how everything is looking. Yeah, looks like most of the rust is gone. Screws and washers look great. Yeah, I don't see any rust left. A little bit there. 
Okay, I think that's good enough. Let me rinse this off with water. Any remaining rust I'll just brush off and then we can paint these. As the body of the transformer is bare steel, let's now apply a layer of primer before our final coat. The outer shells have some exposed steel too, so let's give those a shot of primer as well. Now let's apply a black enamel coat to the transformer parts. The transformer parts have been allowed to dry for 24 hours and the paint has now hardened. Let's put the transformer back together. Now that our corroded parts and rusty transformer are as good as new, let's proceed to building the chassis. As you can see, this section is going to be quite involved, so let's do that in our next episode. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.